What is up guys, Axis and Alloys back here. We got another video for you guys today. Um, uh, today, I think I'll do a, um, well today I'm gonna try over the course of uh, a week to do a, um, a solo game of uh, Pacific, some Pacific 42nd Ed. Um, I'm gonna just play by myself as I'm uh, waiting uh, in between turns with Commander Space Doge. Um, for our 1941 Axis and Allies YouTube board. Um, if you guys haven't haven't been able to tell yet, I um I quite like Pacific. I have a lot of videos of it up on my um my channel. I think over other videos, that's for sure. Um, so uh, today I'm gonna you know start start it off. Um, I saw in the comments of one of my videos. I th I believe it was No Limit. Um, but someone can correct me in the comments. I believe No Limit suggested to combine, um, combine ANZAC and FEC. So I'm going to try out those rules to see what difference it makes having the UK collect at 26 in this game. Um, the rules, I'm, the way I'm going to have it work, it's going to be like, they both collect. Their collection is together. It's going to be in this container right here. Anzac is in the box right now. So they're going to collect together so that way Anzac money can be used in India and Indian, Indian money can be used in Anzac. Um, so I don't know if that'll be completely game breaking, um, but it'll mean they'll, they'll have to balance out their money a little bit. But I think it, it should be allowed because they, they are, you know, American lend lease down to him. And Zach and they can trade. Yeah, that's, that's that sounds relatively good. Okay. Um, I wanted to do something with Russia up top, but I couldn't think of anything, so we're not going to be using them. So it'll be the United Kingdoms, um, Japanese Empire, uh, Americans, and then the Chinese. I could have added some communist Chinese rules in there, but. I'd rather just keep it simple, keep a nice kind of simple game going. So I think I'm gonna let you guys know what happens either at the end of the Japanese turn or at the uh, the end of uh, turn one. I'll see you guys. Uh, see you guys there. All right, I just concluded uh, round one, and um, it was quite um, quite eventful in certain parts of the world. I guess we'll start off with who went first. The Japanese. The Japanese went first. I made some gains in China, um, did a J1 kind of strategy, took out the US Navy, um, took out Battleship here, took out Philippines, got ready to um, extend more into China, some typical Japanese stuff. The US, um, like always, uh, stupidly attacked the Japanese Navy. Um, the two fighters in Hawaii scrambled, scrambled the uh, round before because I guess I thought they would do better on defense, and they, I guess they did. They got a hit or two, and um, the U.S. now got two subs, a trans, uh, the transport and infantry's up top in Alaska trying to run away, um, and it's anticipating the um, Japanese to send more guys over. Um, in China, the Chinese fought back and took took Yunnan back. So they made progress there. And then they took Anhui back, and that kind of affects the Japanese. So they're going to have to attack with the J-hole guys, most likely. But that kind of disrupts their progress. Troops all around, fighters hiding back in Shenzhen. Chinese looking pretty strong. Did um, uh, with the combined Anzac UK forces. Right now they're at 27. And they collected um, plus five in IPCs. I have them all written out here. Very illegibly. So I counted um, I, Anzac and FEC ones, they're just separate. So in theory, they could get plus 15. But hasn't happened yet. Um, so what's happened is they took Sean State back. Um, 
they took uh, Java and Sumatra and killed the transport in Borneo. Japanese does are right over there. Moved their fighters over. Um, let's see. Oh, looks like I forgot to roll the um, the convoy in in um, in Malaya. In Malaya, the cruiser. So I guess we'll roll that now. It doesn't even matter. Okay. Well, this is the conclusion of round one. Um, some Japanese pushing into China and trying to conquer the seas, getting their transports they built ready um, to expand. And then I forgot to do the placements here, so I guess I will uh, do that now on camera. We're going to take the fighter, tank, and artillery. It's going to go to India. Mm, yeah, we'll put the fighter, tank, and artillery there. And we'll move the two infantry and we'll place them in New South Wales. Start building up. That's what we're looking like. With the Pacific game. So I guess I'll get back to you at the end of uh end of round two. Well that was a uh that was uh quite the second round. Um very interesting, but um Japan. Japan's collector new good old forty one. UK, US and China are all beneath the regular collection points. I guess I'll give you the rundown on kind of what happened if we start with Japan. Got a carrier, so they're ready to go and make some more Pacific excursions. US sent their two subs to go and attack. Knocked some stuff out, but not too much, and those will just resurrect because of the naval base there. US bought some more stuff, hopefully trying to avoid confrontation with the Japanese. Um, if we look, I guess, in China, Japan, um, uh, got, as we know, got a pretty, pretty hard hammering, um, you know, for a while there, so Chinese decided to go even further in Chahar, take that, um, and I think, yes, trying to take back Anhui, they lost a decent amount of guys. So they've been trying to fortify, move that fighter, fight it back there. Um, so it can't get uh, taken as much. Uh, we got the fighters just kind of in here, chilling. Um, British took Siam in Indochina, built up here. And now it's kind of fortress union. It looks like four, no, five Chinese infantry, Chinese artillery. Um, two British artillery, three British infantry, a tank. Fighter, uh, like three fighters, tactical bomber. And here, the Japanese took out some of the British stuff and is trying to take out more of the uh, Anzacs, kind of just building up because I have the double economy, right? I can divert more of Anzacs funds to um, to like India, um, and that's that's really helpful. I've noticed that. Um, yeah, it's going good. It's going all right. This was the end of, I think, round two. So I'll see you guys at the end of round three. Will the Japanese continue their reign of terror or will, uh, will somebody finally stop them? We'll find out. All right, guys, this was the conclusion of the latest round. And, uh, boy, was this, um, was this one actually, uh, action packed? Had a lot of um, a lot of interesting twists and turns. So I guess we'll just start off with uh, Japan. Japan right now it's collecting seems to be uh, what forty seven yeah forty seven. So Japan sent their navy over, killed the U.S. Navy, and uh, took Mexico. Um, moved some guys over there to cement their dominance in Hawaii. Uh, took Celebes, Sumatra, Java, and um, 
essentially took over the Dutch East Indies, for the exception of Dutch New Guinea, obviously. And um, so they decided to move into China, got into Chahar, got into Hopai, Kwai uh, Chikau, um, Hunan, a lot of those they already kind of had, but they decided to move into Yunnan. And it was against the British stack and Chinese stack that were there. They sent their entire air force that was available and it, um, they, they failed miserably. And uh, three British fighters and a British tank survived. So China on their turn didn't have much. So they had no, no guys really left, but built their kind of a final defense line put their fighter down in uh, Yunnan and uh, let the British kind of do their magic. So the British so, uh, came in to Quang Si and took Quang Tung to get that sweet, sweet national objective. So taking Quang Tung actually got them like five, five IPCs in reality. Um, kind of held on to this kind of Southeast Asian area. This has been under British influence for a while. But um, I don't know what the Japanese are going to do because their transport here got taken out by the cheeky Anzac FEC cruiser there. Um, so now Japan's going to need to decide, do they wait for reinforcements? Are they gonna, A, are they going to send the reinforcements down to Hawaii to maybe make a, an attempt on the U.S. mainland, which has been very resilient? Or are they going to send it down and try to keep pushing because... By my count, right now they have one, two, three, four. Four victory studies. They can easily take Quang Tung back with their three tanks right here. They can easily take that back, but that would get them to five. So they need to take Sydney, Calcutta, or Washington. Washington's not becoming very likely, and they're going to need to probably pull out of there. They can make a, an attack on Sydney, but then that would leave China. China quite open. So we'll see what happens in, uh, in the next round. All right, just finished the most recent round. Not um, as eventful as any of the other rounds, but um, still very important. Uh, Japan, still making its increases. Moved its guys um, over, kind of trying to cement some dominance, move some guys back. Looks like they're try, trying to take midway. Um, move down to Quang Tong, fighting just another Chinese final defense line. Failed taking Malaya. Still has Dutch East Indies. US has banked all of its money the uh, turn, I guess. Um, I think in, uh, they're going to try to go for a Navy. Try to fight the Japanese. Um, let's see, China. China's not really doing too hot. It's putting its last guys down. Still got that fighter, though. Very valuable. Um, the combined UK and Zach doing good. Moving some fighters out into Western Australia. Holding off in Malaya. And um, moving to uh, get its uh, troops kind of spread around. Um, ready to try to repel the Japanese coming from the north. Moving that cheeky cruiser. That all was started in New Zealand. Took out a transport. Just took out another transport. Probably going to need to divert some forces to that. And it looks like Japanese overall strategy is playing down. Looking further into the uh, southern Pacific. So I think I'm going to call it. Call it a day right now of doing a lot of filming, and I'll probably have the next couple of rounds of this game uploaded later in the week. So this is Axis and Alloys signing off.